Today we're going to clean the EGR valve on a Subaru Legacy. This is a 2013, it's got about 80,000 miles on it. And the EGR valve can get a little bit carboned up and either not seat and seal nicely or in a really bad case it could get so clogged up that it's not actually flowing. And what the EGR valve does is it recirculates exhaust gases back into the intake manifold. So it's an EGR exhaust gas recirculation valve. On this car, it's actually an electronic valve versus some of the older cars, which would have a vacuum controlled valve. And it's hiding underneath the intake manifold. So it's right here. If you look at where this splits directly underneath there, and it's held on by two 12 millimeter bolts. So just a 12 millimeter to take it off. And the instructions, if you were to look at like a manual, would probably say to take the whole intake manifold off, but you can actually get to it if you've got a, you know, a nice kind of smaller ratchet, you can kind of wiggle your hand down in there and get to it without taking off the intake manifold. If you like these kinds of how-to videos, car videos, things like that, make sure to click subscribe. Some symptoms of a super dirty EGR valve would be rough idle. Um, it kind of could act like a vacuum leak. You could have some stalling coming in and out of a stop sign. Um, in the event that your valve was completely clogged or stuck shut, it could actually overheat the cylinder, which could cause some pinging issues. Um, the whole purpose of it is to reduce nitrous oxide gases in the exhaust. So it's basically recirculating that inert gas back into the cylinder to cool the combustion chamber. And in these modern cars, there's just so many things all being controlled that if one thing's off, it can just run a little funny. So it's a nice little simple maintenance thing to do to clean these. So we'll go ahead and we'll get started right now. First, disconnect the electrical connector on the EGR valve. With your 12 millimeter socket, remove the two screws holding it in. Now you can pull the EGR valve out of the car. You can see this one's all loaded up with carbon, could really use a good cleaning. Before I go ahead and clean it though, I'm going to remove the O-ring seal. I don't want this, any solvents to swell that up. And then I'm just using some carb cleaner to try to remove as much carbon as possible. I'm trying to keep the cleaner off of any of the plastic parts. I started with a toothbrush to try to get as much carbon out as I could, which worked reasonably well, but as it turned out, um, I had to step it up a little bit. Using a little battery terminal cleaner wire brush, I was able to kind of work inside of the EGR valve and make sure any carbon that would restrict movement was worked out of there. And then I was able to use a standard wire brush to, for the most part, clean the rest of it off. If you use a screwdriver, you can actually lift the little valve up just to make sure that anything that this valve seats on is completely clean of carbon deposits. And I'm not really too worried about scratching anything. This is all really hardened steel. So a normal wire brush should be fine. If you have a brass wire brush, that would be even better. You can see it's starting to get a lot cleaner already. Once I've got it completely cleaned off with the wire brushes and the carb cleaner, I'm just going to go over it with a paper towel and just wipe any residue off. I don't want any chunks of carbon to restrict that valve. We've got it all sparkling clean. We'll just go ahead and put our O-ring back on. Now we can slide our EGR valve back into place and put our 12 millimeter bolts back on. And last but not least, don't forget to reconnect your electrical connector. And that's it for this project. Be sure to click subscribe, click the bell to be notified, and we'll see you next time.